like to welcome everybody back to another one of our IS 10101 webinars. And joining me again is John Collar, Safe Electric Inspector, and Seamus Green. Thank you very much, guys, for joining me again. The new rules uh, also require that we carry out an insulation resistance test. The minimum value of one mega ohm, which we must achieve, remains the same. Yeah. That hasn't changed. The terminology used in describing the rule is slightly different. In the previous ET101, they spoke about checking each live conductor to the protective conductor and making sure that you had electrical separation there of one mega ohm. Very important to understand a very simple thing. One mega ohm is not an insubstantial amount of resistance. One mega ohm, we all know it, is a million ohms. Okay? So one mega ohm is a massive amount of resistance. Be a lot in euros, Dave. Yeah, exactly. A million euros is a lot of money. A million kilometers is a lot of distance. Yeah, yeah. A million degrees is a lot of yeah. temperature. And a million ohms is a lot of resistance. Yes. Um, the rules use slight, or the, the IS10101 uses slightly different terminology. But in effect, they want us to check two things. That there's a million ohm separation between the live conductors but much more importantly, in my opinion, that there's a million ohm separation between the live conductors and the protective conductors. So it's important to bear in mind when you're carrying out an insulation resistance test that in a normal electrical circuit, the current is flowing down through the live conductor, through your load, and back up through the neutral conductor. So the neutral conductor is carrying current, the live conductor is carrying current, so both are live conductors. I suppose w one of the main parts of the certificate is the requirement for the minimum insulation resistance value of the entire electrical installation. Yes. Yeah. So you can achieve this then by all of your MCB switched on, or if you've got greater than 50 circuits, you can achieve this by using an equation again yeah. and yeah. adding up your minimum insulation resistance values. But yeah. that, that reading needs to be uh, achieved. Yeah. And would you agree? Uh, that the best test uh, to verify this is to do at the end of the job, almost the last test you do, is an overall live and neutral insulation resistance test to work. Absolutely. Dave, how would you carry it out? If you were to say stand in front of a distribution board today, s simply and, and I suppose... Uh, well, I, I always basically follow four simple steps and you cannot go wrong if you follow four simple right. steps. I'm going to outline each of those steps and really tell you briefly why we carry out these steps. Yeah. Step number one is to remove your main incoming neutral, which that is would, normally... That would only be in an energised installation, though. If somebody doing it for the first time wouldn't need to do that. You wouldn't need to do that. Exactly. But, but yeah. uh, I find if you stick to consistency, you'll always get it right. Of course. So step number one is get your blue 16 square incoming neutral and remove it from the neutral bar you have now disabled the neutralizing leak, which should be the only place in the electrical installation where neutrals and earths are connected together. Step number two, get a piece of cable, 1.5, 2.5, uh, about 20 millimeters long, um, centimeters long, sorry, millimeters will be a bit short, we'll be a bit short. and short out your main live to your main neutral. This, of course, is a power off test. Uh, that's a very important step because now you're bringing all the conductors in the installation to the same potential, and it is now impossible to apply any voltage which your test meter might generate across the loads. You don't have to take out any bulbs. You don't really have to plug anything out if you uh, use this method. Um, step number three is to remove any surge protection temporarily out of the installation, even down to an extension lead that you might have plugged in somewhere with surge protection built into it. Surge protection will give you an incorrect insulation resistance reading. It'll normally, if you see 0.4 of a mega ohm, you can nearly be sure there's surge protection in the circuit somewhere. Won't do any harm if you forget this step, but you won't get the correct reading. And the last very important step is to switch on all MCBs, all RCDs, all RCBOs, switch everything on in the installation, mm. including all your light switches, switch everything on. Mm. You can then do a test at the lower voltage, I would recommend, 250 volts to start off with, between all your live conductors and the protective conductor. That will give you an overall insulation for the entire installation. 
and anything greater than one mega ohm is a pass. Typical values that you would get in Ireland are anywhere between 10 and 100 mega ohms, yeah. but you will very rarely see greater than 500 mega ohms or greater than 999 mm -hmm. mega ohms. So we'd recommend you do the overall test at the end of yeah. the job. It's also a very good method for assessing existing electrical installations as well. I'd agree with that, John, yeah, and important. For, yeah. for carrying out electrical condition reports to um, tails upgrade, it is a very important test to carry out for assessing yeah. your complete installation. Fairly simple test yeah. too, isn't it? Very you, simple. You very very simple. simple. You're just dropping out that neutral. Yep. You're putting your link in between the live and neutral, yep. making sure you're switched on and the installation switched on. The important the thing to note here is that uh, I hear lots of electricians say to me when I'm doing my job, oh, I was afraid to do that test. I, I was afraid I'd damage equipment. Yep. If you do the test incorrectly, you will damage equipment. But if you do the test correctly, you can't damage equipment. So you have to be confident as an electrical tester that you can do the test correctly and you won't damage mm. equipment. We might uh, move on now and talk about a test that is changing in the uh, IS10101, and that is the erroneous test. Of course. And the erroneous test is changing in that uh, it's now going to be allowable to carry out the test post-connection using the voltage method. I think, personally, it's a much more accurate test and yeah. a much more... Way, a much better way of carrying be safer test. Safer. It'll be safer test. The risk of damage. There's a risk of damage there mm -hmm. using the insulation resistance value on on, on an unenergized load. So yeah. if we if we have a fault there, yeah. obviously we, we could drop that voltage across the load. So it, to do the voltage test, and I suppose Dave's going to show tell us mm -hmm. how to do it now. But it, it, yeah. it, it, it's a far. It's it's very easy to do. It doesn't yeah. take very long, and it will give us the results. Well but again, everything needs to be well switched we'll, on. We'll, we'll yeah. demonstrate the test yeah. and show everybody how to do it on our test ring. I suppose, again, with, with the introduction of LED lighting and USB sockets, it's proving, again, hard to carry out your pre-connection erroneous test. Yeah. So I would see this post-connection test right. being very positive of course, way yeah. of going forward. You yeah. know? So the change, in effect, is that the erroneous test, which is basically a check, a test, to check for cross connections between yeah. circuits, which will go undetectable in a normal electrical installation. Uh, some contractors have the perception that you can't have the erroneous test if you didn't use a ring main. That is an incorrect perception. Mm -hmm. The erroneous fault can be, uh, can be in any electrical installation. So it's a very important test. Yeah. And what we're checking for is that each circuit is independently fed from one fuse or MCB and one fuse or MCB only. And using the voltage test, we can easily determine that. Of course. Uh, the polarity test still has to be done. We've spoken yep. about that. And there are a number of other tests. But we might move on now to talk about the post-connection testing. And there just, were... Just, just, Dave, sorry, can I stop you? You've said now that the erroneous test, we can move it to post-connection. The polarity test, so it is important that one done, done pre-connection, isn't pre -connection, it? Pre-connection, yeah. Absolutely, has yeah. to be done We don't want to energize an installation with without incorrect knowing polarity. the polarity. So yeah. we, some contractors are using the loop impedance test to verify polarity, but it is no. important that we know that within these rooms, uh, yeah. IS10101, we do require this test to be done pre-connection. Uh, I noticed in the new rules that we used to have two post-connection tests, fault loop impedance and RCD tripping or operation times. We now, in the new rules, have three post-connection tests, fault loop impedance, RCD tripping times, and phase rotation. Mm. Obviously, the phase rotation will only be relevant in a three-phase mm. installation. Of course. But if you're signing off on a three-phase installation, it will be important to carry out your phase rotation test. Great. Thank you very much for joining us for another webinar, and hopefully you found it informative. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks Seamus. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm now going to demonstrate how to quickly and safely carry out an insulation resistance test according to IS10101. We're going to demonstrate here a live conductors to protective conductor or live conductors to earth insulation resistance test today. This method can be used safely in all installations including existing installations and as long as it's done correctly you will not and cannot damage existing equipment. There are basically four steps to carrying out this test. Step number one, and the power is off on this board at the moment, it's never been energized, it's a dead installation, or if it's an existing live installation, it's switched off at the main overcurrent protective device. Step one, we're gonna remove 
the main incoming neutral, which is the 60 in square blue from the neutral bar. The purpose of this step is to disable temporarily the neutralizing link. It should not be required to carry out this step in a new installation because the neutralizing link has never been created. But in an existing installation, it is important to remove the main neutral. Step number two is to create a short between the main neutral bar and the main live bar. And I'm going on to the lighting buzz bar there. Remember, do not go on to the RCD neutral bar. It's the main neutral bar. A way that I remember it is, it's the same bar as you disconnected the main neutral from. Step number three, in this particular installation, we have surge protection. The surge protectors were plug out devices. They were sitting there. So we remove the surge protection. And the very last step might seem obvious, but it's really important. Switch on all your MCBs, RCDs, RCBOs, and your light switches. Everything has to be switched on. If we turn off all the circuit breakers, we get a brilliant reading, but we haven't tested anything. Okay? Now we're ready to carry out the test. And I have my meter set at insulation resistance 250 volts. We would always recommend we start the test at 250 volts in an existing installation. Check that your meter is operating correctly. Join the two leads together. Press the button and the meter should read zero, which it does. We have a functional meter and a functional set of leads. We now clip one probe onto the main earthing terminal. This probe of our meter is now connected to every single earth or protective conductor in the installation. And we connect the second probe basically to the link. So we connect it here to the main live, which is now connected to the main neutral. So in this installation at the moment, all the lives and neutrals are connected together and connected to this probe. All the earths are connected to this probe. So we're going to press the button and we get our insulation resistance between all the live conductors and the protective conductors. And that insulation resistance is 42.3 mega ohms, which is a perfectly normal and acceptable reading. Remember, the minimum is one mega ohm. So we've exceeded the mi minimum by 42 times. This is 42 million ohms separation between the lives and the earths. While carrying out this test, we have applied no voltage across any of our equipment because we have, in effect, shorted out the live and the neutral. So this is the recommended test for insulation resistance under IS 10101. I'm just going to uh, explain a little phenomenon which happens when we're carrying out insulation resistance testing. And I'm sure that all you guys as registered electrical contractors while carrying out insulation resistance tests have seen the value start and then start to creep upwards. I'm going to explain why this happens. I have my meter here, which is set at 500 volts for insulation resistance. I'm now going to draw two little spots on this piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the insulation resistance between this point and this point on this piece of paper, okay? I'm going to expect this value to be very high because paper is a good insulator. So I'll hold the meter there, press the button, and our insulation resistance there is 372 mega ohms. So we've achieved a very high value of insulation resistance across these two little dots on that piece of paper. But now we're going to change things. We're going to take some water. I'm going to wet my finger and I'm going to apply a little bit of water across the two spots. And we're now going to repeat exactly the same test. I'm going to put the two probes back into the two spots and our insulation resistance reading now, because the paper is wet, is 2.93, 3.4, 3.7. It's four mega ohms now and rising. And the reason it's rising is the voltage from our test meter 
is drying out the tiny amount of moisture that's on this piece of paper. And this will continue to rise indefinitely till it gets back to 300 mega ohms. There is no point in you wasting your time waiting till this gets to 300 mega ohms. The reading here at the moment is 5.59 mega ohms, which is a perfectly acceptable value of insulation resistance. And we should now write that on our test record sheet. Thank you.